Gary, round two against Geelong and another really good victory against an opposition who have often caused us a few headaches in more recent times as we prevailed by 52 points. What are your overall thoughts a couple of days after the game? Yeah, it's always nice to travel back uh, down the Geelong Highway with four points tucked in Carey's briefcase, so that was really pleasing. Um, what did I think overall? <clears throat> Probably I thought the pressure was outstanding, really. They pride themselves on, this is Geelong, obviously, of being able to force the opposition into turnovers and then they score. And it's pretty difficult to then win the ball back. But I thought that first quarter was as good as pressure on the opposition and the way we set up around the ball, as I've seen for probably 18 months, to be truthful. So five goals was a terrific result. And I think, again, it shows a really good even spread of performers over the course of the four quarters and um, we're not that reliant on guys who play well the week before. Obviously Geordie had a big day against the Northern Blues but really uh, contributed from a, a score assist but not on the scoreboard as such and even uh, Robbie who had a couple of I guess uh, games ago where he kicked a few goals is also being played in a slightly different role so for, for me as a coach it just keeps I guess putting the stamp on what we can do from a pressure point of view and also to not having too many fluctuations in quarters as far as what we do well and what we don't do well. And there were several pleasing aspects, as you said, but two highlights were both uh, the all-round nature of the win. There weren't many individual losers, if you like, on each line. And second of all was probably that fact that you mentioned before about it wasn't necessarily the usual suspects who shone. It was several of our new faces who were among the best players on the day. Yeah, and I think that's important too, Sam, because obviously we recruited those guys for particular reasons and to certainly improve our overall ability to play against uh, the really good sides. And we've now come up against Geelong and uh, obviously Northern Blues in the first round. So they're AFL aligned clubs. And guys like Dylan Vojo Rainbow, I think his last three weeks have been really, really good. Uh, Brody Murdoch probably had his best game for the club since he's come across, obviously, from St Kilda slash Sandringham. And Eli Templeton, I thought, was really good through the middle. And he just gives us a different mix in there. And I think young Mac Gravett's just getting better and better as well. He had a bit of a slow start due to uh, off-season hip operation. But even the combination of Kelso and Waddell in the ruck, certainly Reece Stanley's a pretty good player at VFL level. So we needed to make sure that we were good in those areas. And overall, all those guys get a tick and hopefully it continues. Uh, and from a coaching point of view, what did you make of the way that the boys stuck to their plans and tactics? It seemed as if uh, there was a real focus on that pressure that you mentioned before um, into causing the Cats to, uh, to make some mistakes and hopefully being able to limit their ability to do some pretty you know, decent damage when they do have possession. Yeah, that's true. And I guess Geelong are probably a bit different in relation to their youth this year. Uh, some of their guys have obviously moved on to other clubs. So perhaps certainly if you look at their group, it's a little bit unusual or different from what previous years have been able to, I guess, bring to the table. But overall, we want to keep bringing four quarters of consistency. And that's what any coach wants out of his players. And of course, I think it really helps when you've got Toby Pinwell, Sam Dwyer and Robin Nahas out on the ground because they're basically coaches in their own right, even though we don't want them to, uh, I guess, deviate off the playing side of things. But I think it really helps myself and obviously Ryan James in the box. But look, we're looking for an even contribution. And I think at the minute it's only two games in, but certainly the internal pressure is there for, I guess, the coaches to see. And we just want that to continue. So if guys aren't really doing what we want as, a, as an individual or as a group, then we've got players that can come in and uh, hopefully take up the slack. And this week it'll be another great challenge for the group as we come up against Richmond, who are sitting undefeated at VFL level as well as AFL level. And another good chance to gauge where the group currently sits and also a great chance to showcase our club as part of Channel 7's live coverage at Northport Oval. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, we want to keep our momentum going. And certainly Richmond had a huge win against North Ballarat. And, of course, anyway, they toughed it out last week, obviously, against Sandringham. So, again, it's going to be about how much we can look forward to just taking the small steps to become a really, really good side. And it's only in its infancy. And the more quarters and games we can get our group to play together and gel and combine, then you create that chemistry. But, yeah, we're under no illusions. It's going to be a really tough game this week week and hopefully again the four quarters will be of a consistent nature. Well Gary congratulations on the weekend to all the players and coaches. Thanks for your time on Borough TV as always and best of luck against the Tigers. Yeah thanks Sam and I believe you just uh, slipped me a little note to say that we've got 960 members so we need another 40 for that magical thousand so let's see if we can bring that up by uh, Saturday's game.